We're going to begin our discussion of animals with the invertebrate group. The invertebrate group is uh, one of two divisions of the animal kingdom. The other division will be the chordates. The subdivision of the chordate group are the vertebrates, and this is the uh, class which amphibians, reptiles, uh, birds belong to. The common feature of all vertebrates is that they lack a backbone. These animals tend to be very small. They do not have an internal skeleton. Some of them, such as the insects, do have an external skeleton that we refer to as an exoskeleton. There are seven groups of invertebrates, which you can see here. Some of them will be familiar to you, and some may be unfamiliar to you. Let's take a closer look at them. The first group, and arguably one of the most simple, are the sponges. Believe it or not, sponges are classified as animals, although they do have some plant-like characteristics. The second group are the, is the cnidarians, and the most familiar example of a cnidarian is the jellyfish. Jellyfish can range in size from about the size of a quarter to very large jellyfish such as the man of war, which can be 20 to 30 pounds. Next we have the flatworm group. Flatworms are very colorful animals. They are aquatic, tend to be found in tropical regions, and just as the name would suggest, they are very flat. The next group is the roundworm group. This is probably one that you're unfamiliar with. However, our first dissection will actually be a roundworm called the Ascaris. Ascaris is a parasite and is very simple. It uh, has a simple digestive system and a reproductive system. That's about it. The next group is the annelids, and the most common example is the earthworm. Compare the annelid uh, picture, the earthworm there, with that of the roundworm on the left. You'll notice that the annelid group has uh, rings and the roundworm has a smooth surface. One of the characteristics of annelids is that segmented appearance. The next group is the mollusk group, and this is one of the most diverse of the um, invertebrates. It ranges from the sedentary uh, clam and oyster to the uh, very fast-moving octopus and squid. The final and largest group of invertebrates are the arthropods. This includes insects, scorpions, spiders, crustaceans, and ticks and mites. Here you see a pie chart of all the animals that have been discovered so far. The largest group are arthropods. These are vertebrates, including the insects. 73% of all animals are insects. We're very much outnumbered. 12% of all animals are non-insect arthropods. So that would include the sponges, cnidarians, flatworms, roundworms, etc. 11% of animals are non-arthropod invertebrates and uh, in, are, um, vertebrates, the purple slice there, account for only 4% of the total number of animals in existence. So this includes, that 4% includes the mammals, reptiles, amphibians, and humans. Every animal, including the invertebrates, must carry out seven basic functions. These are feeding, respiration, circulation, excretion, response, movement, and reproduction. During our dissections, we will be looking at how each animal accomplishes these seven basic functions.